Well, we have a special guest for this one. This is Callie. Oh, she's liking the camera. Oh, yeah. She's liking that. Oh, she's loving that. Um, we're, we're setting her for, for the weekend. Um, we've set her before, uh, but Polly was not having it. She was not a fan of Callie. Um, even though Callie's a very sweet dog, Polly would go to the edge of the couch and just do this and like, just wouldn't even look over. It was so funny. Sorry. Um, the message today from Romans was quite profound. Um, the first thing is that God brings himself close to people. Okay. He, he brought himself to Abraham and presented him with the land that he was going to, to ultimately bring him to, uh, the burning bush to Moses, right? Uh, in the garden of Eden, when he approached, they hid from him, right? Um, God, you have so many people who say they claim that they just, they have doubts, right? But God comes to those who are patient and seeking him. He comes to them. That's the pattern we see in the Bible. Patterns are very important in the Bible. And uh, the pattern we see is that God comes to people, he comes to them. But this is where it gets really interesting. That does not mean, though, that although God comes to people, that he's not specific. So in a very general sense, he comes to people, but then he also has specific things. So like the 10 commandments he brought to the people, but the 10 commandments are very specific and the gospel he will bring to the people and the gospel is very specific. So the way it kind of is understood is this, this is Romans 10 is basically understood that God brought the 10 commandments to the Jews Okay. He brought his presence to the Jews. He's brought his Ten Commandments to the Jews. So there was nothing there that they didn't have that they needed from him. Now, the Ten Commandments accomplished their goal. And then God brought his presence, his specific presence, in the specificity, specificity, specificity of the gospel Whoa, 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 um, of the gospel um, to the Jews and the Gentiles. Now, this is uh, this is where it gets really interesting. So he he, the, Paul goes on to say that without the, so it's critical for someone to be saved that they believe in their heart. And confess with their tongue that Christ is Lord. So this is a very specific thing. And so he goes on to say, how will this happen if the pre if there isn't preaching done? And the answer is, is that it, it won't. It should be expected to be done. But then the question is this, the very end of 10. What about to the Jews? Did God bring the gospel to the Jews? And the answer is yes, he did. And he gives very specific prophecies where God, the issue wasn't that God didn't bring a message of salvation to the Jews. The issue was that God was dealing with a stiff-necked people that were rejecting it. It's very interesting. The conflict between Jesus and um, the Pharisees and Jesus and the religious leaders of his day was not a new conflict. Jesus himself said this. This was a very ancient and old conflict between the Jews and God. And it was being manifested in front of the world, right there in Israel, that they simply were not going to listen to this. They were fine with God in a general sense. But whenever God gets specific all of a sudden, ah, people start having doubts. People start struggling to believe. 
it's okay to believe in a generic sense of God, right? That's fine. If you want to believe in a creator, that's no problem. But the minute you start getting specific, like, ah, uh, you know, he starts having, he has moral demands. Now all of a sudden, yeah, you're a religious wacko. And, and the more extreme you are in this area, the more of a religious wacko you become. So extreme that you may end up in a really bad place, as we saw with Jesus. Highly recommend a close study of Romans 10. It is very interesting, and I found it to be quite profound. Anyway, um, have a good day.